Welcome to another episode of Power Alphas. I'm one of your co-hosts, Savvy Piscatelli. And as always, I got my beautiful, beautiful fiance, beautiful. but yeah, very, but very, very, you know, we're limited. And when I could say fiance, though, soon it's going to be my beautiful wife, mm. Amanda Sacramento. How you doing today, baby girl? Doing great. Yeah, I kind of can't wait for that. I don't know why. Sometimes like fiance comes off as like. It's so weird. Like you don't my, like yeah. it? No, it's like my fiance. Maybe it's like the way women say it sometimes. Like my fiance. Like, all right, we get it. You have a fiance. Like, doesn't it kind of come off like? Yeah, I feel like sometimes when women like, say like when women. Yeah, do, it's right? almost like okay, we know you got yeah, you got like, a guy. We get it. You're yeah. engaged. Yeah. Like we, we see the <laughs> ring. <laughs> no. But uh, uh, what's going on, everyone? We're excited to be back. Uh, luckily, I made it. I had a rough travel day yesterday, as you guys saw on my social media. I had a little. Cockroach, join me in my in my party. Did you give it a name? Um, no, I killed that motherfucker real quick. You killed it. Well, I called. Well, I called you actually. And oh I'm, my God. if you guys, if you guys saw me in guys, the hotel room, she called me panicking from from. I'm in Florida, okay. Like I was gonna be able to do something about it. I don't understand what I'm gonna do about it. But she's calling me panicking, telling me it's huge and it's the size of this and the size of that. And then I saw it on her Instagram and it was it like was a peanut. Big. No, it was not a peanut. That is not true. <laughs> Everyone, even on my Instagram, will admit that was big. So just admit it was big. Okay, it Why was big. To... It was big for a cockroach, but it wasn't big. Like, I'm thinking this thing's like a guana. The thing was, well, you know what a cockroach looks like. Uh, so anyway, I was filming some videos on um, my social media explaining to you guys what had happened to my travel day. And I'm just laughing as after the fact because I was ex like telling these videos while the cockroach was just like roaming around. Then all of a sudden I see it in the corner of my eye. I jump up. I was so paranoid because I always hear stories like watch your bags. Thank God I didn't have a lot of bags or suitcases because I wasn't supposed to stay the night. So I had a little backpack, I zipped it up, I put the shoes up on the counter, uh, the table, and I jumped up on the couch. And I'm like, oh my God, it was so bad. So then I, I get to the phone, I call, I'm like, there's a cockroach in my room. I'm like, I need to switch rooms. Thankfully I go down, well, I kill it first, kill that, kill that bad You guy. killed it? Yeah, because I, you know. How'd what you kill it? it? What you step on it? some eggs? I took my shoe and I whacked it on the wall. Oh, it was, oh, it started crawling up the wall? Oh yeah. Yeah, the best is it was crawling and wow. there was the cabinet and it was coming underneath the cabinet. So when you said, oh, we'll just kill it. I'm like, I can't, I can't find it. So I'd, I'd go walk over there. I'd come back. It would come back out. Ooh. Oh, it was playing hide and seek with like you. Hide and seek. A little hide and seek with you? Yeah, it was playing, playing little <laughs> games with me. I do not do well with that. Like, even mice. It's I, funny, I my hate. mom hates cockroaches I, she too. Palmetto, palmetto bugs and cockroaches, she like screams. Yeah, which some people say it might have been a palmetto bug, but I was also in Augusta and I know there's palmetto bugs in Florida, so I wasn't sure. But either way, I don't care. Disgusting. Uh, like, ugh. I'm pretty impressed that you killed it. Right? Me too. Because I'm I'm, uh, they're I, pretty quick. When you were like, oh, and I killed it, I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have she, proof didn't get the, too. she didn't get the hell out of there. Right? I have a video. I killed oh, it. Oh, she did. Yeah. She got a new room. I did, but I was like, I was like, let me get it real quick because I was on the phone with them and I like smacked it and then I ran out. Thank God I didn't have to like pack up anything and I had nothing. Um, but yeah, I, something about Augusta with me and I was saying earlier, American Airlines, I don't know what happened. I actually tweeted them and they DM'd me because I don't normally do this, but they have just been like so many delays I, ever since COVID. I don't know what happened to American Airlines. I don't know if I'll book American anymore. You know, it's a good, th I'm glad you brought that up though. I'm very disappointed and a lot of customer service in America is going on right now. And I'm going to bring my Samsung phone up. I know it wasn't yeah. give me a hard time. I don't have iPhone. I've had Samsung for a long time. And I have a the Z Flip phone, which I do love. Um, but I've had three screens in less than a year with it's, the flip phone. I don't think they're able to flip up. You know, it's been a nightmare. But what really turned me off times. this week, I haven't, I haven't had a phone in a week. Um, my phone in a week. I've had another phone. The X screen actually broke. But the thing that's really uh, bothering me, I feel like it's getting bad in America. Have you ever noticed the customer service in anything mm -hmm. I feel like is getting worse and worse and worse? Yeah. And that's what Samsung right now. Their customer service is horrible. And you said like American Airlines was horrible. Like yeah. I don't understand why we can't just talk to friendly I people know. in a customer service arena. Yeah. A, mo a lot of times there's like a language barrier too. Oh, the language barrier kills me. Them. Well, I just don't understand Please. how um, nowadays with technology and how where we've come, like where we've grown to, it's like it shouldn't be like that. I don't know how you've had no phone for a week because I do everything on my phone. <laughs> it's been a nightmare. 
and Ben, guys, his, his other phone nightmare. is literally cracked. He could see nightmare. like the top of it, so he turns it, and I'm like, what, what well, is no, going here's on here? A, no, so the funny thing was, um, this is how Samsung gets you, though. This is hilarious, right? So they're like, so my phone, my screen breaks again, goes black. The flip, so it goes black. I call, I call Samsung. It's under warranty. I bought it like four months ago. They're like, yeah, it's under warranty, but you got to send it back to us. And we'll fix it. I'm like, so hold on. You want me not to have a phone for like seven to ten days? It's like, yeah, maybe you can get a loaner. But they play dumb because they yeah. know you're going to say no, right? They know you're going to say, well, I can't have a phone for ten days. So what they hoping you do is either go buy a new one and spend your money or you go fix it real quick at like a break and fix and spend 500 bucks. So they know that they're making it very difficult for you. So they're hoping you say, you know what? I'm not taking you up on a free warranty. But here's what they got me that pisses me off. I send my phone back. They're like, it's under warranty. They're like, there's no physical damage, right? I'm like, no, it's in a case. We're all good. But the, the funny thing is the little rubber piece popped out. And I, did, I didn't drop it. Didn't fight, it just popped out. So I sent it back. I get a notice from them oh, like no. three days later. Oh, Not in warranty. There's physical damage. I, I called them and I went off. I, I want to talk to a manager. I, for two days, I'm fighting with them. Guys, I didn't drop the phone. The rubber piece fell out. Yeah, I, it didn't even fall out. It doesn't do with the screen. They're like, well, sorry. You have to pay 250 to get a phone back. Like they said, I have to pay 250 to get my phone back. So finally, after two days of fighting, I paid 250. Get my, and I still don't have my phone but back. But he prolongs the process. Well, obviously. I prolong because I'm fighting for two days. These man, the man, you know, the manager said both days. Um, let me see what I can do. I'll call you back in 24 hours. Both times they didn't call me back. I had to call them, right? So then, long story short, I finally pay it, and I still don't have my phone, and it's been nine days. And then my backup phone, that was my old Samsung. That went black the second day I was using that phone. So literally, I have no, I can call in my car. I can't do text messages. I can't read emails. It's been a nightmare. No social media. It ben, just, I think the solution here is time to yeah, switch it's over time. to the iPhone. It is, it is. But I just paid Stop for this phone. Stop trying to be different. But I do love the flip phone because it's so convenient. It's, it's small. It goes in your hey, pocket. Like the nice. screen broke. It broke five times. Mm, like not it, that many, but yeah. Three. Have you seen that new, the new iPhone? The little pad that the new phone that they came out with, it's like so tiny. iPhone? Yeah. The iPhone? No. Oh, the, is it a flip phone? They, no, no, it's like a little tiny. I think it's like a, it's really? like a kid's phone. But, oh. but hey, maybe that'll. Well, I'm actually surprised least, iPhone does not made a flip phone yet. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the flip phone anyway. I wouldn't get it. But um, I will say Apple is much better when it comes to that customer service. Samsung, no good. Yeah, no good. So yeah, I had, a, I had quite the day. Um, however, I did have um i got my hair done as you can see um looks beautiful thank you yeah i was like just you know at least my hair looks good um the girls in augusta salty locks extensions always do my hair they have the best quality hair uh the biggest thing with them as well is like they're so great at blending you know when you sometimes when you see certain extensions you guys don't really know this as much but like you know if you could see the extension it's usually not that great you, the whole point is you don't want to see yeah them. i can't even see it yeah you never do on mine but they blend it really well my natural hair has grown tremendously which is like here from what it was my hair was really short obviously so they've like been able to keep my hair healthy we've been putting like you know we, i don't put bleach in my hair anymore so they're just really amazing um Brittany, one of the owners, they're two sisters that own the company. They have a beautiful salon in Augusta. So I actually went there for a hair class that they were um, mainly doing for fusion bonds. It's a type of extension. So they were doing the hair class, and I don't know what it is. The last time I went for the hair class, I had an issue with my flight coming home, and I got stuck there in Charlotte. And it's, some, it's funny. It was American Airlines with my layover in Charlotte. Charlotte yeah. was where I got stuck. So whatever. Um, you know, it kind of sometimes makes me bring – it brings me back a little bit to like my travel days and like how I did that for so like we had those issues at least once well, or yeah, twice a week. Because you fly so much, because you, you fly you, so much, you gotta have it by just and it was odds. Like, it was almost like no big deal, but I think now that I'm out of it, when yeah, I do it have an issue, worse. I'm like, oh. Well, especially when you were so close. Like Augusta is like six hours away. Yeah, you I know? was just going to drive yeah, at if, that if, point. And you actually, if you actually think about it, you actually fly almost backwards for a second. You, go from, you do. You go from well, Augusta to Charlotte to go come back well, that's my south. Home. That was what yeah. I was annoyed about because I was going to just get a car. But I'm like, if I get the car and I drive to Charlotte and I let's say I don't make that flight, mm. I just drove, it was like kind of an um, hour, e like more like a little northeast. north and east yeah, yeah, yeah. from Augusta. I'm like, I just drove a little north and east to then add on an hour and a half to go back down to Florida. I'm I like, know, I would be pissed. So long story short, whatever, um, is what it is. I, you know, I definitely don't miss that on the road, which, um, we can talk about a little wrestling right now being, uh, segueing in there. Um, nice. 
Nice. That was good. That was good, right? <laughs> you know. Um, we could talk about my uh, ex-boyfriend, Otis, if that's okay with Your you. ex-boyfriend? Is that wow. okay with you? Yeah, I'm not intimidated. You're okay, right? I'm okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Otis recently did an inter interview on Chris Van Vliet's YouTube. Good love Chris Van Vliet, though. Yes. Shout out to Chris. We've had him on this show. Great dude. We love Chris. We've been on his show. He's been on ours. Um, and it was a great interview. And Otis is just the best. Um, I reposted some of it, actually. But um, one of the main things, and there's articles about it, is that Otis says that Mandy Rose was the ignition of their romance storyline reflects sorry, of their romance storyline, reflects on facing Dolph Ziggler. So Otis basically talked about how um, I went into Vince's office and was like, listen, I think this could be a good storyline. And I feel like a lot of people didn't know that. So it was very interesting because I got a lot of comments from that. And the funny part is, is Otis talks about it originally that like, you know, do you remember Otis just constantly commenting on my photos? Mm -hmm. Like that's where it all started. So Otis thought it was just always funny just to comment on my photos and fans pick up on that. And they thought it was really funny that, you know, Otis has a thing for Mandy and then rumors were going around. Like, are they actually dating? Like all these things. <laughs> it's crazy. And, um, so Otis was talking about how he would just write on my photo, uh, you know, comment on my photos and people would talk about it. So he just kept doing it. And then, Otis and I one time and, and you know, we're just passing by and at TVs we're like, you know, it's funny, like people really resonating with this, like wonder if we could do something with this. And it was in the same time frame as, you know, Sonia, Sonia and myself going into a storyline and Dolph was involved and all these things. So long story short, I did go into Vince's office and I, I said, you know, this could be something I didn't have like an actual like full plan, obviously. It was just kind of like a little pitch. Like, what do you think of a storyline with Otis and myself, maybe involving Sonia? And, you know, the, the original plan was like the obvious, I should say, was like have Otis, you know, fall for me. And then I eventually, you know, like I don't want him. And there Otis is the biggest baby face of all time because he's clearly loved by the people regardless. Right. So it was really nice, though. Otis really did put me over on that in that article. And the one quote that I want to read to you, babe, I don't because you didn't see it, did you? No, I didn't oh, see it. Oh, he hasn't had social media this week. So yeah, I had no social clips. media, which has kind of been nice yeah, for a week. But then, it, you, I said that. but I will say, you, you you feel so lost without your phone. Like I, I feel so lost. That's well, I was watching you like while we were watching TV some nights, and I know I'm always on my phone. But it's so funny. I'm like, I. I do so much work on my phone that I would be like no, out I am, of commission. I'm lost. Like, I know, but but but, but I will say this good. though, it's kind of good though. Yeah. When I watch TV, I don't grab for my phone. I actually focus on the show. That's what I was yeah. Right? Say, yeah. You get so wait. distracted. Yeah. There, yeah. There's pros and cons to it. I was gonna say, I think everybody should have a week where they take their phone and put it somewhere and then see what happens. Well, no, you, you, you know should. what I think. You you're know, right. you know, you're absolutely right. But you know what I think, and I'm gonna start doing. We all start doing. But see, Manny says she works a lot. And she does. She does. There's a lot. I think there should be limitations on your phone, meaning like, yeah. let's say eight o'clock, my phone goes up, right? On the charger. Like my buddy of mine um, that works out with me, him and his wife, they keep their phones downstairs when they go up to the room. Like They say you're supposed to because yeah. of the radiation. Great, yeah. yeah, they don't yeah. like, I have that there, chip should, on there mine. should be some sort of like limitations or restrictions on your phone. Like, okay, eight o'clock, I'm sitting with my fiance or my wife on, on the couch, no more phones, right? You should have some restrictions like that, I, I believe. I think so in, on a lot of the, or iPhones, you can do that. You can restrict on all your apps. You mm -hmm. can put how many hours you spend on it, 30 minutes, 25 minutes. Really? Yeah. Well, I was talking to someone yesterday, one of the girls, and they do that, and they were saying that it's really helped them lately, and whether it's like at 8 o'clock or whatever it is after dinner, they do their do not disturb, and or they have like a, you can set the time of when they can answer the text, or I don't know what yeah, it there's is, like, all these there's things. Yeah, so there's so many custom, yeah. yeah. So she does that and she says it's like a game changer because then like she doesn't get clients reaching out to her after when they shouldn't be because people get a little too comfort, you know, close. I know. I know. I'm sure you know. That. Yeah, it's <laughs> hey, Ben, can we come in tomorrow? It's fucking midnight. You're like, I'm sleeping. And I'm like, wait, guys, it's, I'm, I'm trying to go to bed right now. You think it's OK? That, that's actually so, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. But so I have to do a better job at that. I think I think my problem, though, is like I don't want to say I'm obsessed with the phone a little bit, but I will say I think I get a lot of stuff done. Would you Shut say up. it's an addiction? Yes. Yes. One hundred percent. Right. Oh, I think so. Ben, sometimes yeah. I'll catch myself like reaching for my phone, 
I'll look. I'll scroll on Instagram. I'll put it down, and then I'm like in a, like a zone. I'll just pick it back up, and I'll start scrolling again. I'm like, yo, but what am I doing? Even, you're not even like. And I'm not looking even looking. For I'm like, anything. what am I doing? Not even looking. Yeah. What, do I, what did I go back on Instagram for? Well, they're so overstimulating. Yeah. Obviously, we know that. There's too many things nowadays, and like I said, I do a lot of work on mine. But like when we go, go sit down on, on the couch, and if I'm not interested in the show, which is like 90 percent, like 99.9 percent, that savvy picks. I like I like docu series, like real shit. I'm just like you know, I'm not into like the action and like the weird stuff. Sometimes Sometimes. So um, I get a lot of work done, though, like whether it's like getting stuff for the wedding, like, you know, little last minute things like I'm sitting there and buying stuff. I'm on TikTok buying. Ben, things, we'll we'll call it. We'll dangerous. call it work. Yeah. We'll call whatever. It all work, Side ben. note. I well, it's off, like it's I honestly it's like you're the m biggest multitasker in the world. Because yeah. if you think about it. Like in me, when I when I'm doing stuff, I'm like editing, and I'll wait for something to load, and then I'll do like four things on my phone. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, uh, I'm being smart. I'm I'm letting something do something. Right. While I'm you kind of feel like you're getting a lot of shit done. But then you realize you're just in a a, a rabbit hole of just yeah, yeah. reels that you're like, wait, this has nothing to do with what I was supposed to be. So doing. true. Yeah. Sorry, so we got I off went topic. off the beaten right. path. Sorry. It's okay. No. Um, but I did want to mention quote him one of the things he said which is just so funny and it's so Otis like when you hear him say it so he goes um I'll just start from this part because I don't know where to start but he, he said she was definitely the ignition for sure because you can pitch all day long but again like with Mandy she's like I'll talk to Vince okay because I was just kidding around I would see a bikini post on her IG and I'd be like you look good babe and then it became this thing on Google it said is Otis married to Mandy Rose don't get jealous it was just one post and I'm sitting here there going oh I can get some more leverage here. So I kept posting it just for laughs. And she's awesome. The girls, they're, they're a blessing too. So yeah. But she talked to Vince, came out, and then we started rocking and rolling there. So I mean, but she was definitely, it was definitely Otis. Like, so I mean, but she was definitely like, hey, we got to do this. It's one of them things where I'm going to kiss the world champion bikini model. Behave yourself. Every day was a test. <laughs> Can't you picture him saying this? Oh, he goes, goodness. we can never do a pre-shot. It was always live because somebody would mess up. I'm sweating terribly because I got to get a, I got to get a hold of a cake. What is he even saying? What's a cake? I don't know. He's talking about my cake. The box was so, oh, the cake the we had a scene with, we had a, a segment oh. with the cake. He's, he's giving examples. The box was so uncertain that I was like, this thing falls during a live show. So everyone that knows Otis, obviously me reading this is, there's no, you can't get any perspective because he's just so so entertaining. And if you go watch that interview, because it was really funny. Um, obviously, I can't do his voice, but I thought that was really funny. How he's like, I'm sweating now. I gotta kiss the bikini world champion. You know, <laughs> I, I feel like that storyline was obviously very very successful. And people loved it. I think they could have done more with it at the end. Well, yeah, um, but there was a lot of things that happened. I know it was a lot of things that happened, but I think that thing that that was a perfect Beauty and the Beast. Kind yeah. of storyline. Um, well, and, and I think we, you guys both did a great job in it, too. We did. And also, the, the biggest upset was just, obviously, COVID. And that we were stuck in the performance center in front of zero fans. And we had to do our big moment of the, the, the final kiss in front of nobody. And like, do you know what the fans would have done if we were in a live setting stadium? Yeah. With you know almost a hundred thousand people, like that place would have erupted. They erupted during the Royal Rumble when he saved me. Like, could you imagine? I know. So it's one of them things where it's like, oh, damn, like it, it's shitty. But I actually was talking about this in another interview that like, you know, you can't look at it like, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, or anything like that, because everything happens for a reason. Like, if that didn't happen that way, everything else wouldn't have, you know obviously panned out the way it did going forward and my NXT run and all these things. So I just feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, it was, it was a shitty time for the world, obviously because of COVID, but it was just crazy and, uh, good times. Definitely one of the, it was. one of the, the best storylines though out oh, there for sure. It was. And Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And you guys all know, cause we've talked about it before, how Savvy had to be there for one of oh, our kisses. Oh my gosh. I was there like the first, uh, when you guys filmed that whole scene in the pool. So you got sloppy seconds. No, 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 no. He got sloppy <laughs> seconds, okay? No, I kissed him first. <laughs> no, you did not. And then we made love that night. No. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> not funny, Ben. Now we're all thinking about it. <laughs> oh, Are we God. picturing that right now? Oh, there was no tongue with you guys. <laughs> no, there was no tongue. Oh, my God. He mm. definitely snuck a little tongue in there. Yeah. I was like, "Whoa, Otis, take it easy over there. <laughs> let's just do, let's just." 
Like when you actually think about it though, like that was wild. And like the shit I, the shit I did on TV, it's so funny. Cause I was like my poor dad, like I was a home wrecker. Like why couldn't I be? You were a home wrecker. Like my room. NXT run was amazing. Cause we got to show like really what I was capable of doing. Like I'm not just all looks here, guys. I had to come out in a towel. I was a home wrecker going after women's uh, husbands. I was in a Beauty and the Beast storyline. Like it wasn't like someone you like you fought with your best friend. I fought with my best. You're not friend. a good friend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I'm. A, I was a really shitty Dude, character. You're a no shit. wonder why people hated <laughs> you're me. You're a bad person. <laughs> so I guess NXT really was a, a good glow up moment for me. Good times. Good times. Yeah, it's well, crazy. Look at you now. Look at yeah. me now. At Who would have thought? Who would have thought? You know what's funny though is like. I think what made your character really good is like you're the opposite in real life of what your character portrayed itself at. Yeah. And I think that's that was the art of made you made you a very good WWE character. And Definitely. you know, people that don't know you might assume that you played that character easily because that's who you are. I was just gonna say but that. But you really are the exact opposite yeah. of that character. And the only people that knew that were the people that were in my circle. Oh, and 100%. I, I have a small circle. Very, so and, it was very believable because yeah. when they look at me, they think I'm like that. Oh yeah, because your presence alone right. will radiate that that's your character. Like, I mean, for instance, not to talk about me for a second, but when I was playing my character, my character was easy for me because it was like almost like somebody I kind of wish I was. Yeah. So it was easy, like snap in that mode and just and just be that dude. But with your character, like you were kind of like physically, you were great, and that's what you they you you were. But you acting that character is like not who you were as a person. Right. I don't think I would have fallen in love with a person like that. No, obviously, but, but we all that, know that's the beauty of it. Yeah, that's but the I art think, of it. I think we could relate with both our characters because I think you, from someone looking in, you know, from the outside in, like that didn't know you, you're. You were like, okay, that's probably how he is. <laughs> like Derek and I used to say it. Like we didn't know you that well, but we were like, oh, this guy is definitely like. You also played it really good, so it was very believable too. So it was almost like, no, that kind of maybe is how he is a little bit to an extent. Like we, they always say, take who you are and times it by a hundred, which I think is a good. Well, no, they replica. they always say a good character in WWE is a part of you that's either turned up. 100% yeah. or turned down a little, like 100%. So for me, uh, I think my character was turned up 100%, but it was almost like what I envisioned, I kind of wish I was, right? Yeah. But then I believed that I was that in, in a shell. Well, yeah, so, your accolades kind of Yeah, so, so anyway. for me, it was easy to play the character. But I think that's a beautiful um, art of a WWE superstar and everybody in, in that field, in that realm, is, is the ability to be able to portray a character that you believe that the people can believe in. And, and I think you did such a tremendous job in that. And I think what's, what's beautiful that people even listen to this podcast and they hear you speak, they know that's not who you are. So, you know, that's why I think you still have such an amazing fan base who loves you. They want you to come back and they follow you and they cheer for you. So it's kind of, it's definitely a knock for you in a, in a good way. Yeah, thank you. Well, I also, that's why I love having this podcast and also my social media. I try to stay so active is because, you know, I think the people that see me, every day and they know my personality and like you know i think actually you might have been might have said it and like oh like you know how you're you're so humble and like you're funny on your social media like that's good because people like that like they don't just associate you know mandy rose as this person that's you well, know they want to see vulnerability and, yeah. and they want to see relatability yeah for sure right? i mean look, look look at you not a lot of people can relate to you you're gorgeous you're you know amazing built amazing body uh Tell list goes on list Tell goes on more. beautiful teeth <laughs> oh. beautiful eyes botox just kicked in speaking of botox <laughs> babe hold on now i ain't gonna lie to you I'm, wait your forehead's looking really good i'm, I'm looking on this camera you know, I can right tell now you're looking at yourself yeah i am looking at this camera <laughs> you gotta right watch now. the eyes a little bit yeah what it, ben we might have to switch no i kind of you know what i'm talking I, about i, I kind of like the camera right here y'all hold on you know what I'm talking about, right, Ben? We'll talk about it later. We gotta give we gotta give a shout out to the uh, babe. You gotta give him a shout yeah, out because so I did get a little Botox before <laughs> the wedding. I'm gonna admit, I'm not gonna lie, I'm no. not gonna lie. His forehead's looking pretty good. It guys. does look kind of good right now, though. I'm so kind of proud. I dragged Sabby to the best, uh, Lindsay, the aesthetic specialist, right here in Boca Raton. Um, she really is the best, and she always does an amazing job. She's conservative. She never tries to, you know upsell you in anything or if you need anything um so we both got our botox obviously the wedding is now like five weeks out about so it's like a good time to get it i just got my botox where i normally get it and then i did a little lip flip which is like kicking in right now so i feel like those of you who don't know what a lip flip is it's 
a little Botox like right here because it relaxes your mouth a little bit because I used to have like a little gummy smile and I feel like you're fully not like asymmetrical your face so I feel like one side is a little like it just I don't know maybe it's just myself and I'm crazy but I feel like one side sometimes goes up so like when they relax it a little bit it like is more even so I feel like sometimes when it kicks in you you kind of like I couldn't drink out of a straw because it was like <laughs> it feels weird what about the one time that I had too much in the and I did a signing it was, even, it was like Wrestlemania weekend I think we might have talked about this before I don't know I can't remember but I was it was like like this. Every smile was a weird. <laughs> it was so scary. bad. And I don't know if I noticed it as much, but after the fact, I was like, oh my God. So anyway, Sabby got a little Botox. <laughs> she didn't go too much. Because... No, because I had that. We talked about in the podcast. I had the eye scare one time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so she went high. But um, no, I actually not looking in the camera. Yeah, I, I can like tell. it. You're I really like checking it. It yourself good. out over there. Well, but, I told Savvy, we're getting married, and, like, this is one of the most important days of your life, and nothing's wrong with Botox. Like, Botox is preventative, and he obviously didn't ever get Botox. I've been getting Botox for a long time because you start young, and it's the same thing like anything. You know, you don't get the lines, the permanent lines that you may have or whatever it is. So um, shout out to Lindsay, the aesthetic specialist in Boca. She's amazing right over here in, uh, what's that called? The Royal Palm Plaza. Royal Palm Plaza. Yep. Um, so beautiful Peace Love Med Spa is where she's at. They obviously offer a ton of other things, facials, um, microdermabrasion, all that stuff. And I will so, say their office is designed so how cool. How cute is it? So cool. You got to check it out. Like literally go check it out. It, it is such really detailed cute. and it's just like a very like cool atmosphere when you walk it in. It is. Yeah, yeah. They, they made it really nice. It really is cool. Well, speaking yeah. of shout outs, um, oh, yeah. we got to show the wedding ring first of all. I want to give. Um, Not clean. That's the wedding ring, guys. Oof. That's look about at that bad boy. That's about a year and a half old. But um, we just got our wedding bands done as well. Same man who uh, built me that beautiful, beautiful ring is. Uh, I want to give him a shout out right now. His name is Wesley Shepard, and he is located at International Jeweler Exchange, um, right past the Turnpike on Glades Road. So when you go there, uh, it's called the Jewelry Center. And you could ask for Monica's wife or Wesley. He'll take care of you. He's the best in the business. He's been in this business for 40 years. Yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing. He just built us our wedding bands. Um, oh, guys, wait till you see our wedding bands. Our wedding bands are beautiful. He actually bought that. I mean, he built, he helped me build this you beautiful. Bought I bought it. <laughs> I wish he bought it. Trust me. But he helped me build that um, beautiful, beautiful rock that uh, I yeah. bought my amazing fiance, but please, if you're in South Florida and you're looking for a jeweler, go check him out. His name is Wesley Shepard again, and it's right off Glades Road, right past the Turnpike um, on the right-hand side, International Jewelry Exchange, and I promise you, he does watches, jewelry. He's yeah, they done, have a lot of stuff He's there. done Mandy's, uh, she got a nice um, tennis bracelet that I got her for Christmas. Um, now we got our wedding bands, and uh, you know, if you need that, that jewelry, go check him out. Yeah, he's amazing, and they have a lot of stuff there. So if you guys are in that area, make sure you check them out. Um, I can't wait to show you guys my wedding band and Savvy's wedding band. Yeah, I'm excited. I designed mine too. Crazy. Counting down, guys. I think we're less than 40 days. Yeah, I'm right? a little nervous. You get nervous? Oh, Savvy, tell them you wrote some of your vows already. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I got the vows. I went so, away for one day, yeah, guys. Yeah, she went away for one day. And I just, I sat in the computer and I just no took. Phone. Yeah, no, no, exactly. no phone. Yeah, exactly. No phone. No, no phone. There you I, go, took, ben. I took my computer out. And I just started like, you know, you know, what actually started watching some stuff at Park Chateau, some beautiful videos that were made from prior weddings. And uh, I just saw a couple people doing their vows and then I started, it just kind of like clicked and started like, I started had like this little hamster wheel rolling. And, um, you know, I, I think I got something good. I really do. I, I, and I think I've already I've almost memorized it, which is cool because, you know, in, he's, he's going to memorize his because he's so good at that. And I'm going to be am, like, yeah. But I think because, you know, for, for us, <laughs> the promos, you know, doing the promos and, and, you know, again, I was fortunate to always Can speak, I get a teleprompter? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I remember rem memorized promos too. Don't forget. Well, I was the champion for 413 yeah, days. Yeah, I know. So you could do it then too, babe. No, I can do it. My, Don't get stage fright. So my whole thing with it is I can do it. I have full confidence in doing it. Do I want to sit there and memorize them? No, because I'm, I'm have, doing I'm most have, of the work. Remember? I'm gonna what most of the work? Or what? Like I, there's a I have a long list of things I have to do now until the wedding. I still have so much stuff. So do I? Am I gonna have time to sit there and memorize? I might. I might try. No, don't memorize because I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the sheet just in case yeah. I get lost because I know I'm probably gonna cry. Ben, I'm like. <sighs> 
<laughs> and the tears and shit. But uh, pulled out my handkerchief or whatever. You I got thought. it. You so got I was it. so you I know. was trying to get some of our music playlists going because I was just adding songs and on Spotify they have like so many wedding lists already like made. And I'm flying today, and I um, was listening to some of them and like I won't tell you guys some of the songs and stuff. But like I was crying on the plane. And I was like, you know, when you don't want anyone, I had no one next to me, thank God. But I'm like, my hair was just done. So I was like having it in front of my face. I'm like, oh my God. You know what I think like, is- am I going to be okay? Well, you know what I think is weird though? That's like the first time it's happened because I'm going to be honest with you. I, I've already teared up like multiple times uh, thinking about our wedding. I teared up the last time we went to Park Chateau and I was kind of walking through the venue. We were looking at it. I mean, I got emotional. I get emotional thinking about, like I, I'm actually nervous that, you know, I'm going to try to hold it all together in front of everybody. But like, I already got emotional like a handful of times um, thinking of this. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm excited. But I mean, again, it, it's it's normal. It's all normal stuff. No, it I'm is. I'm surprised it's the is. first I, time you said you got emotional. Though, no, no, I, no. I've been emotional a few times already. No, it wasn't the first time. No, no. It was just one of the times. Hey, guys, should, like, we, should we make a bet on the podcast right now? Who is going to tear up more, me or her, in the wedding? Well, I also am going to have a full face of makeup on, and I have to like make sure my makeup doesn't get messed up. So, But I'm, I know I'm going to tear up. because My vote's on Savvy. Yeah, really? <laughs> my, my vote's on Savvy. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I think, though, you no, got makeup, like, You got to remember, it. like, my dad, you know, dad and daddy-daughter dance. I'm his only girl. His, like, you know. But the it's youngest. okay. Listen, I, I, listen. You know what? I don't overthink that. I think I know. it's a beautiful thing. I mean, I'm. You know, you're 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 no, not you you're emotional because you're you're so excited, happy, passionate. Oh, yeah. So so for me, it's one of them things that uh, I already know. There's parts parts I'm a bit emotional about. Um, but, uh, I'm just excited, but who knows, you know, sometimes like, it's funny because there's scenarios that I'll put in my head that I get emotional now, but maybe when you're in the scenario, you don't get emotional, right? Maybe you're, you kind of like know how to focus your energy and you don't. I think so there's a I, lot I'm of, I'm curious a, to see. There's a lot of things going on and it's a lot of happy times with obviously some sad because of like some people that were missing there, like my brother. And there's a lot of things going on. So yeah, I do agree with what you mean, but I think there's going to be times where it's like, it's okay to shed some tears oh, and there's no sure. reason, like don't hold it back. Don't do like the lump in the throat. And then you're like, <laughs> Mandy. Mary told me if I don't if I don't cry while she's walking down the aisle, she's gonna like leave and go the other way. <laughs> like I see those videos and it's like he turns around, it's a fucking golf, golf clubs. clubs. But I'm like, I see those videos. If that's not you, I don't want it. Goodbye. Right. Um, one thing before we wrap up, I did want to mention. I know we're going back to wrestling, but you know, hey, I know I got a lot of wrestling fans watching this. But um, shout out to Jay Uso for winning the Intercontinental Title. Um, championship last night, Monday Night Raw, which was two days ago now. Um, very happy for him. He beat Braun Breaker. I know you didn't watch it, Sab, but Good that's okay. Um, I actually had it on because it was when I switched rooms with the cockroach thingy. And uh, it was the main event. So it was a great match. I didn't watch the whole thing. Um, really liked the story they told. But very happy for him because I think his story says it all. He is so over right now. I mean, his yeet thing alone, like... This is what is crazy about wrestling, too. Like, who would have thought the word yeet? Like, what even is that? But the thing that he does it with, like, the yeet, the whole crowd erupts from this thing. And I think it's really cool for Jay because I was around them a lot when he's I was. He's been a long time in the industry. He's been there a long time. And him and him and his brother are just amazing people. And um, I think for a while, like, you know, it's tough when you're a twin. I think also one sometimes overshadows the other. And I think it's like there's always competition. And I think... Jimmy at times maybe did overshadow him, but then I think Jay really has like really grown and he, I mean, super, super likable person and character and he's just extremely over right now. So kudos to him. I think it's really cool. And they put on a hell of a match. So it was like the spear versus spear. Good. Everyone does the spear these days. I love it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so shout out to him. But um, I'm excited. You're excited. excited. We got a like lot of things. I know we're very... 30 busy people around here so um make sure you guys drop your questions in our emails at power alphas podcast at gmail.com we love answering your questions and um follow us on youtube spotify and apple Podcasts, and OnlyFans tv as well and we'll see you guys next time